appreciate, uh, you know, I've had uh, some interaction with your organization. It's been fruitful, um, particularly the budget and finance workshop last fall. I've been on a couple of your webinars. Uh, I think that's great that you're providing that now. Um, after the webinar takes place, you're posting them on YouTube so that actually all the world can get educated on whatever the topic happened to have been. That is absolutely super stuff. Uh, thank you for that. I want to encourage you to continue doing that. The, um, <coughs> the workshops you do, I would like to see a similar treatment on YouTube so that we don't necessarily have to go there. And, and more important than you know, us having to go, which frankly, when I went to the budget workshop last year, I thought you know, a big part of the experience for me, we're talking to other budget committee members from other towns. Mm -hmm. The interaction, yes. the, the new perspective that I got, there was valuable information in the presentation, but the opportunity to interact with other community members that were on budget committees or on selectmen, yeah. just a little while selectmen there as well, uh, and cool. getting a different perspective from different aspects of the state gave me a broader perspective of, uh, that I could bring to bear in my function here. Uh, but at the same time, not everyone's able to go there, and I think that the citizens, the voters in town, would be uh, well served just seeing the presentation on YouTube. So if you could, uh, you know, set up a camera there and throw it up on YouTube afterward, I think that would be a, a, a service that would be uh, um, very helpful in governing all the towns in the state, certainly here. Um, I did have a couple of questions for you. Um, I don't, I'm not inclined to do kumbaya, but I do appreciate <laughs> yeah, no, the no that you come to. Uh, I do have some things that I wanted to ask some questions about. I heard that you say that you were a private entity, and I acknowledge that you are a private entity. Uh, but I also heard Stephen say that you're subject to 91A, which I find yeah. interesting. How is it, as a private entity, that you're subject to 91A? We are a quasi-governmental entity as as that comes under uh, the right to know law mm -hmm. from a corporate legal perspective. We're just a, I can't remember the statute, but under, under some statute, we are created under that statute and that's structurally how we are formed. So but because the revenues come from governments, that gives us the quasi-governmental status, right. which so, has... So it's it. actually because you have an enormous percentage of your revenue coming from the government. Yeah. That's what requires you to conform to 91A. There's a Supreme yeah. Court case. Right. Ten years ago? Was it that long? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that came out and said, yeah, you have to follow the, the uh, aspects of 91A, and we do. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. of the funding, yeah. uh, percentage mm -hmm. of funding yeah. you receive from government, much like Rockingham Planning Commission Absolutely. would be the same kind exactly. of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wanted to get everyone to be on board yep. with that particular point. Uh, I, I view you, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but you, 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 you uh, basically are a lobbyist organization. And as a lobbyist, of course, your education, your educational activities is the foundation of your lobbying effort. Your lobbying is mostly done at the state house, but you also lobby within the government, within the various towns and cities in the we, state. We don't lobby municipalities. We don't no, go I said educate. Educate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't lobby. Yeah. We don't go and lobby for passage of a, a, a warrant article on the community. Right. That's that. We don't do that. No. Mm -hmm. uh, when you spoke earlier about representation from the town, mm -hmm. um, that's a person, and I don't even know who our representative is this year. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody does, except for whoever decides who they are, and how is that decided who they are. You mean to the policy conference? Yeah. That's determined by the, the, the hierarchy, and I'm trying to remember if it was correctly. If the, municip if the municipality governing body does not choose an individual, so it would be up to the select board in Hampton situation, it goes from the mayor or the chair of the board. The next would be a member of the board of aldermen, that? selectmen, or yeah, council. Governing body, yeah. The next down is the chief administrative officer, so either the town manager, city manager, or town administrator. And then you don't, I think that's the last one. We, we have only have a certain yeah. number, yeah. So it's essentially the governing body, and if they don't make a decision, then... It defaults to one of those. The town manager basically makes the decision. No, nope. if the mayor, if the chair goes, the chair can sign in. 
if another member of the select board goes, they can sign in. Oh, so the chair can make a delegation all on his own, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're talking two different yeah. things here. Yeah. The Board of Selectmen can delegate anybody they want to to be the uh, town's representative at the policy conference. Okay. Should they not delegate anybody and some and two people show up, then then we look at that hierarchy to determine who gets the vote, because only one person would get the vote. So ideally the town would delegate somebody. And I can tell you, I personally had an issue, not, not, wasn't that an issue, but there was a policy conference where I believe I was actually chairing it, filling in, and my community, a select board member went. Mm -hmm. So I, I could chair it, but I couldn't vote in it. So, because I wasn't the, I wasn't on the hierarchy. I know you've had some, yeah. some conflicts at these meetings with more than one person showing up and, yep. and things yeah. like that. And, you have to come up with certain rules of how you're going right. to resolve that conflict. Well, much like town meeting, you have you to move on with the process, right? We hand out cards. Much like town meeting, if you have the card, then the vote counts. Uh -huh. So we have. That's how we do it. So if, if say that in in, in uh, the town of Hampton, no one no one shows up. Uh, Which is typical. Let me finish my hypothetical. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> it is not uncommon. That's why I'm bringing it up. Excuse so me, if yes. no one showed up from the town of Hampton, and I, as a budget committee, showed up, budget committee members showed up. Would I then be able to cast the vote in a policy matter? I think you would. I'd have to look at the rules. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head, but that's one of those things we'd have to look. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, as for showing up, I think we usually get maybe 75 to 100 of the 234 cities and towns. That's kind of, kind of a low percentage. Yeah. And we, we well, you know, it and I'm not sure it is. When you look at how many people vote in elections and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> I think yeah. that we... Uh, well, 50%, oh, yeah. yeah. 50 but, Judy, to right. be fair, yeah. I think that's a fair comparison. Yeah. We're talking about people who are actively involved, actively yeah. involved in government, you know, which is a different population than the voters at large, many of which are not, you know, really tuning in that frequently. Uh, we all know that. Well, you know, you, you may say that everybody should be more actively involved. I mean, how many people haven't watched the ads on TV when something is coming up like a presidential election? But How many have mm -hmm. not watched the ads? How, ma well, yeah, how many have not watched? I think everybody has, uh, and I, they I, don't. I turn the channel whenever. They <laughs> <laughs> That's what C-Fan is for. Yeah, all right. <laughs> if, I, if I was, because I actually chair the policy conference as chair of the board, and if I had 232 now, Cities and towns come have a representative, each representative, I'd love it. Right. Sadly, it's not going to happen. I mean, because you've got, somebody may not be able to make it. I would love to have everybody there. Um, but, you know, we do get a very good, I mean, we don't get 12, which is very, you know, which I would almost probably want to have have the meeting. And it's good debate. And it's a good cross-section there, too. I don't want everybody to think it's like, well, we got 50 people from the seacoast and... 10 from Keene and nobody from the North Country. These meetings bring out across the state. Yeah, sure so and that's and I think that's one of the big important things too. That it's not just a Concord area group, it's not just a Seacoast area group, it's not just a Keene area group, it's a statewide organization. And you know, I have, I always feel I actually feel bad because we have a lot of people from the North Country who are probably the most dedicated board members who drive <laughs> down every time even if there's snow. And some of the closer ones won't. So I, I just I want to well, those up in the North Country. Those are traditional town meeting. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, no, Berlin. We got city. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But most of them are traditional town meetings. Still, most are. Yeah. 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 That's the best part of your classes. Yeah. Is to meet everybody from everywhere. Yeah. The uh, lobbying activity that I see that you do over the years, to the extent that I've been able to follow your history, which thanks to the internet, I've been able to do with much greater ease than in the past. Uh, it seems like they're, you're a very effective lobbying organization. Um, and there are other lobbying groups in the state that you're kind of like interacting with or doing battle with, depending on how you want to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on the issue. Yeah, um, there sometimes, are sometimes we can... We work with them. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we don't agree. I mean, there's a group that we traditionally work with a lot, a town clerk's, uh, town clerk's association. 90% of the time we agree on, on bills that come through. 
every year there's one bill that we are going to be loggerheads. Town clerk. Town clerks mm-hmm. association. They have their own association. They have their own. Okay. Yep. That's very like, there's, a, there's a uh, road agents association. There's a library association. There's a <laughs> there's a managers association. There's a group of tax for everybody. Tax, <laughs> tax collectors. So there's other associations. And, and you're really an association for the governing body. We're the government, right? We're the, the governing, governing body. Yeah. Right. Is there an association for the legislative bodies? We we view it as we represent the municipality as a whole, as a whole. Mm-hmm. and the governing body is essentially the CEO of the municipality because we have to be able to get our marching orders from somebody. So then those other organizations like the town clerk and et cetera, you would consider those to be uh, you know, uh, redundant to no. what you're doing because no, absolutely not. you're actually because representing speci- them they, as well, right? They have more uh, specialized knowledge of what they're doing. They're, they're the people with the feet on the ground every day off of their organizations. Mm-hmm. I mean, even as a, as a manager, I don't know every time that the town, what the town clerk goes through in, every day. They need to get together and explain what they, what they see, and especially if there's an issue with a bill that's going to impact their operations. So no, I don't see them as redundant. They're just more specialized than mm-hmm. what, we, you know, what we do. We try to look at what's going to impact the municipality as a whole. So you're going to your body conferences and you're collecting representatives from the governing bodies. We collect from a broad array. We have planning board members. We have governing bodies. Um, we well, have the selectmen are making the choice, uh, basically. And they're the governing body. Selectmen are making the choice for what? I'm sorry. Who's, rep- who's representing a town, so to speak? The policy? In the policy. At the policy right. conference? Yeah, that's where you decide what policies you're going to pursue or not pursue. Right. Right. So when you're deciding which policy you're going to pursue or not pursue for your lobbying efforts for the coming year, you're, you're uh, basing that decision on the votes of people that the towns send to that meeting. And the people that are sent to that meeting from those towns are basically decided by the Board of Selectmen, that is to say, the governing body. So the representatives are really representatives of the governing body. Fair? You you may find that and... Is that a fair statement, is all I'm asking? I think it's a fair statement. I think that you are suggesting that there's some bias in that, and... No, I I'm think most sure. of the time, most of the time, the governing body and the legislative body's interests are aligned, but there are times when they're not. And uh, there is no legislative body lobbying group that, that represents the legislative body when they are not aligned. So there's kind of a, a occasional problems that arise from that. And I think part of what Mr. Lane was speaking at the deliberate session actually speaks to this very point. Because you remember his famous phrase was, uh, you know, quote, they don't represent us, they don't ask us. And I sat back and I looked at that video several times and I'm asking myself, who is he talking about? Us. And I realized he's talking to the town meeting. He's talking to the legislative body. And he's saying just just that. There are times that, well, in fact, you don't ask the legislative body. You ask representatives of the governing body. And his statement had some basis of merit, in my opinion. And I just wanted to kind of highlight that because I, I don't think he went over the top with that statement while many might interpret that as going over the top. There's one thing also, just real quick, that you've got to realize, too. You're discussing one form of government in the state. There are 20 municipalities, and I believe it's a, it's very close to the majority of the state, are not governed under a town meeting form of government. They're under, they're under a representative form of government where the legislative body oh, is, wow. is rested in the council. Yes, but it's we a are representative form of government. But we are not right. right? And I just want to make sure. But our organization also has to balance. We balance the larger communities that are representative forms. We ba- so actually, there's some representative forms that are much smaller than. I, you know, I acknowledge what so you're saying. So we we have to balance them all. And we try to get that uh, broad perspective there too. Mm-hmm. And I understand what you're saying too. Yeah, the the legislative body. We yes, we have a, the the most of the pe- the representation of the policy committee are appointed by the governing uh, body. That's the policy because the governing body represents the municipality. And that's not just with our organization, that's across the state. The governing body is mm-hmm. the governing body. That's by definition. So, um, but trust me, there these, are, these policy sessions aren't rubber stamps either. There's a lot of debate. Well, I, think, I think I just wanted to bring yeah. some, some uh, fairness to the issue because some people have been, you know, 
not as um, circumspect in looking at Mr. Lang's comments at the little recession. And when I speak of legislative body, of course, I'm talking about the town of Hampton's legislative mm -hmm. body. And I think his statement has merit. I think you agree with me that it has some merit. Although, all by itself, it may not be enough to justify defunding the, the, uh, the dues. Now, from my point of view, uh, the educational material that you're bringing forth to the general public, as well as the opportunities that we have, is worth the money, especially when I see things like, you know, dealing with retirement issues that have, have risen and other things that you save us a lot of money, and it's money well spent. And I think the public needs to know that. But at the same time, there's no reason we have to, uh, or I should say, there's no reason others need to uh, vilify those who are perhaps speaking accurately when they say, you know, you don't represent the legislative body here in the town of Hampton. That's just a fact. You know, uh, well, oftentimes you do when they happen to align with the government. We represent yeah. the government, right. of, yeah. but there are times when it we doesn't. represent the government of the town of Hampton. Right. One right. thing I might like to add to sure, that. Sure, This is a real good point. When I was the representative of this committee, and you can verify this, I went up there, and unbeknownst to me, another selectman had promoted an idea to the policy board. And guess what? It was a democratic process at that meeting to endorse that idea, and I was adamantly against it. The town of Hampton had voted against it many times, uh, yet it was passed by this policy board because the majority at that meeting, which was a democratic process, endorsed it. So one could argue successfully, or argumentatively, that it's a democratic process, the towns all get this voice review, Take it or leave it, that's the way it is. When you vote for democracy, you get it. And I can tell you, what the, the most contentious issue I've been involved since I've been chair at the policy conferences uh, is gambling. We, that comes up because municipalities have the right to introduce legislation, I mean, not legislation, but a policy, and it comes up, it says, to see if the municipal association will take a position supporting legalized gambling. I know that's going to be a long debate, and I get ready as, mm -hmm. as basically as a moderator of the group. But um, it's it, it was said it was a democratic process. And every municipality has one vote, and we don't take a position on that as, as we don't take one on education funding, because that would put community against community, and it's not uh, pretty productive on that situation. But you know, it, it's a democratic process, and if a majority said, "Yeah, we are going to take a position," then we take a position. So. That's, and that's across the, t the state from each municipality. Well, yeah, it's a democratic process right. among those representatives every, that was every, sent by yep. a, you know, a governing body, okay. which Absolutely. is something of a democracy when you say that only property owners can vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Richard? Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome.